Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome to the Wednesday after Easter. And as we gather today in God's Word, we continue in Exodus as God continues to provide for His people. The psalmist for today is Psalm 134, and we are in Exodus 16, uh, chapter, verse 13 through the end of the chapter. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the joy of the psalmist today in Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May he who made heaven and earth, he who made the heavens and the earth. God did that so mightily and he provided not only that, but for our absolute needs of every single day. When we realize that everything we have in life is a gift, including the, the cognizant ability we have when we wake up, the oxygen we breathe, the heat in our houses, the food in our sh- on our shelves, it is all a gift from God to sustain this body, but also look at those eternal gifts. Take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood of the New Testament given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. My word is a lamp to your, my feet and a light to your path. We talk about all of these things, these gifts that God gives to us where he sustains us, body and soul. Well, today in the reading we go to that. Again, we are in Exodus. We're in chapter 16 now, the middle of the chapter to the end. And Moses writes this. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine lake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord commanded. Gather of it, each of you, as much as you can eat. You shall each take an omer according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with the omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as they could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left parts of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each, And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept until the morning. So they laid it aside until the morning as Moses commanded them. And and it did not stink, and there was no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. 
So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations, so that they might see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout the generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate manna 40 years till they came to the habitable land, the hospitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. This is the word of the Lord. Well, as we heard yesterday, God was testing his people to see if they would listen to him. Gather it for six days and then gather twice. So on the seventh day, you don't have to go out. Now, not only did they not have to go out, the manna was not there. As we look at the text, we see what God was doing here with his people. He was testing them so that, that they would trust him every day. That they would know that every day, God's gifts come to them. And as he is doing this, he sets this up so that the Sabbath day would be a holy day. Now, when we, we hear that commandment, you shall... Uh, Excuse me, when we honor the, the name of the Lord in the third commandment and we look at this, we sometimes get the idea that we can't do anything on Sunday, that we have to rest, we have to not do anything, and if we do anything at all, then we're breaking the commandment. Well, when we look at that commandment, what we're understanding is we're not looking at God's gift of the commandment in the right way. Yes, we should not be working on Sunday. Why is that? Well, it's not because God says you can't work. It's because God says, I will provide for you. I will provide for you so that on Sunday, when that time comes, you can rest in my word. You see, if we have the worries of having to go and find food every day, what would it it would not take very long, and what we would think is, well, I can't go to church because I have to go out and gather manna. So God took that away. And out of the mighty miracle, God said, here's manna for today, Friday, and gather it again for tomorrow, and I will keep it so that it will be there for you tomorrow, food for you to eat for your body, so that you might hear the food for your soul. When we look at the commandment, oftentimes, we turn it around and we understand it only through the law. I can't do anything on Sunday. Well, that's not what the commandment gets at. The commandment says, rest in my word. Sunday is for the time when we rest in God's word, knowing that he will provide for all of the needs of body and soul. Yes, in our world today, we end up working on Sunday sometimes because of our jobs and because of things that go on. Does that mean we all go to hell? No, it doesn't. It's required of us by our employers. But there are also times when we can gather in his word. If we're working on Sunday, we gather in his word by reading God's word, by reading through the liturgy, by listening to daily devotions, by going to worship on Wednesday or maybe a different service on Sunday where we're not working. You see, the options are there. The options are for us so that we might always be fed and nourished in God's word so that he can provide for needs of body and of soul as well. It was a test for Israel as they were there. He said to them, don't gather, or don't gather on the Sabbath because it wasn't there, but gather twice as much the day before. And God provided. And it didn't get moldy. It didn't get worms in it. It didn't stink. It was good and waiting to feed the bodies on Sunday. God continued to, try to give his people what they needed. Can you imagine 40 years? 40 years, every day when they walked out, the manna was on the ground. 40 years, the quail came into the camp and they had meat and they had bread for that day. 40 years God did this. And as we go on, we find out that that their shoes didn't wear out and the clothes did not wear out and their feet didn't swell. 
and they were healthy. God provides for his people, and he did that every single day so that they would trust in him for this day. In a little bit in the catechetical review, we'll look at that part of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Why do we, why do we uh, pray for it this day? Because we're trusting that God will give us what we need. Now remember, there's a difference between wants and needs. And God continues what to give us what we need to sustain us this day. We are still in the week of Easter. And we still have that great resurrection morning greeting in our ears. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And that was daily bread. It was the bread of life on the cross given for you. It was the bread of the Passover given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And that daily bread for us each day is his word. And if we are so lucky to be in a divine service where his word is given to us, his body and blood is given to us, there again, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins for this day. This is the good news for this Wednesday of Holy Week. Thanks be to God. Now let's jump to that catechetical review on the Lord's Prayer, the fourth petition. Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with support and need of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, devout uh, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. And manna would be in there. And pizza would be in there. And medical care would be in there. All the needs of daily bread. Well, our hymn for today as we recognize the great joy of Easter, this is one of my favorites, Christ the Lord is risen today. Saints on earth and angels say, raise our joys and triumphs high, sing ye heavens and earth's reply. And then verse 4, lives again our glorious King, where, O death, is now thy sting? Once he died, our souls to save, where thy victory, O grave? When we rise on that morning, when our Lord raises us from the grave, that will be our cry as well. Where is your victory, O grave? Because our victory is in the one who has risen for us. We pray. Father, we thank you for your daily bread for us every day. Continue, Father, to help us trust in you that you will provide our needs for body and soul. Hear us now as we pray the prayer you've taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, Christ is risen. He's risen again. Alleluia. Join us again tomorrow.